Do you enjoy learning about the past? Well, you're in luck, because there's a lot of it to uncover. So close your eyes and plunge into this grab bag of historical knowledge. Well, honestly, don't close your eyes, you're gonna need them to view this video. But before that, hello there! This is Ed Chat, your one-stop know-it-all to everything wise and innovative. So, what are we waiting for? Without further ado, here are the top 7 strangest historical facts that'll make you doubt that they're real. Learning history can feel like cramming facts and details about famous historical personalities into your head in school. And while it's vital to know the past, discovering a few quirky history facts along the way makes learning so much more enjoyable. From the 4th of July history to culinary history facts, to even St. Patrick's Day history and loads more. Whether you want to learn more about the past or want to impress your friends at your next history quiz night, these bizarre historical facts and trivia are sure to impress. Number 1. Starting off, did you know that researchers once transformed a cat into a telephone? Yes, this is true. And don't forget that this is a real, live, breathing cat. We know what you're thinking. You've gotta be kidding me. Unfortunately, the answer is no. Scientists at Princeton University set out to examine how sound is perceived by the auditory nerve in 1929. They used a cat that had been drugged but was still conscious as a test subject. The scientists, Ernest Weaver and Charles Bray, took out part of its brain and hooked one end of a telephone cable to its auditory nerve and the other end to a receiver. Weaver was in a soundproof room and could hear Bray talking to the cat through the receiver. Even though it may appear to be a bizarre experiment, many researchers believe that it positively impacted the development of cochlear implants. The cat turned phone, on the other hand, somehow survived, but Weaver and Bray didn't want to let it back into the world. As a result, they euthanized it to test the theory on a dead animal first. It did not work. Number 2. Have you heard about dentures created from the teeth of deceased warriors? On the other hand, George Washington purportedly wore gold, lead, and ivory dentures manufactured from a mixture of human and animal chompers, according to legend. Aside from the cherry tree lore, the idea that George Washington wore dentures made of wood is one of the most pervasive and persistent historical falsehoods surrounding the general president. While Washington certainly suffered from dental problems and wore multiple sets of dentures composed of various materials, including ivory, gold, lead, and human teeth, wood was never used in Washington's dentures, nor was it commonly employed by dentists in his era. Number 3. Love or duty for the king. In ancient times, you would choose the king's service, of course. But what if he asks you for something bizarre? Kind of like how this king incited reverence for the dead body of his beloved among his subjects. This story of a pair of mismatched lovers takes an unexpected turn. In 14th century Portugal, the king's son, Don Pedro, fell in love with Inez de Castro. There are just a few problems with this. For one, his father, King Alfonso IV, disapproved because Inez was illegitimate. For another, Don Pedro was married. A noblewoman named Costanza was his father's choice for his bride. And Inez was her lady-in-waiting. The king ordered her assassination when Don Pedro refused to quit visiting her. Two years later, Don Pedro ascended to the throne and excavated her body, dressing her in regal attire and proclaiming her queen. According to historical legend, he made the other nobility kiss her hand to demonstrate their devotion. Number 4. Boston is currently recognized for its famous baked beans, Fenway Park, the Boston Marathon, and the Bar from Cheers. But did you know that Boston witnessed a devastating molasses deluge years ago? This made the Boston Tea Party look tame. In January of 1919, a massive molasses tank burst in Boston's North End. While a molasses flood might sound like a scene from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, it was no laughing matter. Nearly 2.5 million gallons of the sticky liquid were stored in the tank, and it was poured onto the streets at a blistering 35 miles per hour. It was virtually a full-on tidal wave, reaching nearly 15 feet tall and killing 21 individuals. 150 additional people were hurt, and buildings and residences were knocked off their foundations. Emergency responders had a lot of issues reaching the victims since they had to crawl through the sticky mud. It took Bostonians weeks to clear up the mess, and many locals would report that in the summer heat, they could smell the sticky sweet odor of molasses even years afterward. Hold on! Please click the subscribe button to get notified about more updates. Also, don't forget to leave a like. Which of these facts made your jaw drop? What other facts do you think would make you change the way you understand history? Tell us in the comments below. Now, let's get back to the video. Number 5. For all the love that little girls have for Thomas Edison and his invention of the doll, despite his many other triumphs, Thomas Edison's attempt to produce the first ever talking dolls was a resounding failure. However, his 1877 development of the tinfoil phonograph was a tremendous achievement in terms of sound recording. 
and the unlimited potential for this technology was not lost on Edison. A range of baby dolls was made possible by the invention of the wax cylinder in 1890. With wooden bodies, porcelain heads, and little phonographs in their chests, the dolls were unlike anything the world of toys had ever seen or heard of before. The phonographs played back recordings of young women recording nursery rhymes like Hickory Dickory Dock and Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. If ever there were dolls that needed their own horror flick, it was them. The outdated, jumble technology, the harsh voices, and the doll's creepy visage combined to convert them into nightmare fuel for all. However, that isn't the real reason the dolls were a failure. The microphonograph's demise was caused by their brittleness, short lifespan, and poor sound quality. To top it all off, the dolls were astronomically priced. Number 6. Even though zombies are frequently shown in future apocalyptic films, did you know that Europe witnessed the closest thing to a true zombie pandemic in 1494? Italy's Renaissance period was a vast, little-known dark side. A massive outbreak of syphilis swept through the French army as sailors returned from the New World. The warriors then brought what would become known as the Great Pox to the rest of Europe. With no such thing as antibiotics back then, the disease was free to spread unchecked and its repercussions were severe. The skin on victims' faces would literally rot away from the disease's horrific sores. It affected the individual's nose, lips, and other body parts which had fallen off entirely in some cases, and a number of them died due to the infection. So, while there was a lot to enjoy about the Renaissance in Europe, the contaminant syphilis outbreak was virtually the real-world version of the zombie apocalypse. No big deal. Number 7. If you love watching movies, documentaries, or even reading books that have something to do with vampires, then you'll absolutely appreciate our final story. In the 19th century, New Englanders dug up a young woman's body because they feared she was a vampire. You've undoubtedly heard of the Salem Witch Trials, but what about the Rhode Island accused vampire? Residents of Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Vermont were baffled by a tuberculosis outbreak that occurred in the late 1800s. Since its victims tended to look sunken, pallid, and drained, people thought that they'd fallen prey to vampires. So, understandably, a vampire hunt quickly commenced. A family in Exeter, Rhode Island, started dying one by one from consumption, and neighbors assumed that someone was feeding on the others. After the mother, Mary Brown, and her two daughters had died, the villagers decided to exhume the dead bodies, suspecting that one might, in fact, be undead. Brown's 19-year-old daughter Mercy had died much more recently than her family members. Therefore, her body was in considerably better shape. However, even after all those years, her heart still retained some decaying blood, which was solid proof to the villagers of her being a vampire. Because of this, they decided to burn her heart and liver and mix the ashes with water to keep her from striking again. They then offered the concoction to another infected townsperson as a cure. Unsurprisingly, that didn't work. These historical facts sound so bizarre that they don't appear to be true. But historians consider an event verified if all of the sources agree about it. However, no matter how many sources point to a particular version of events, it won't prevail unless it can withstand the scrutiny of critical textual analysis. If you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then subscribe and hit the notification button to get updated about our latest content. Remember, if you're feeling wise and techy, then EdChat has your back.